Sponsor us some. The response says, If today you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The heart is a seat of love. That's where God comes. And if he comes, if he's allowed to come there, human beings become a new creation. Today, if we had listened to first reading from the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was one of the prophets who were taken to exile in Babylon just 500 years before the birth of Jesus. And there, when the people were already than cast, they were almost given up. They had almost closed their ears because they had thought, since the temple has been destroyed, their abode men and women have been taken to exile. What remains? It seems God does not answer our prayers and therefore they, are, they block their hearts. They block their, their ears from God. They did as if God was wrong. And they were right. They forgot that they were taken to exile because they failed to listen to God's warning to them. The consequence was they found themselves in the foreign land where they shouldn't have been. Because faith comes by hearing. The only evidence of one who, who is faithful to God is by listening to him. When they were in exile, having lost almost faith, began to worship many gods, thinking those gods could save them. At that point in time, God spoke to Ezekiel. And the mandate he gave to Ezekiel is very tough. The same mandate he gives to you and, and me. Is he, put up, he put up a scenario he says to Ezekiel, I am going to place you as a sentry. A sentry is a, a, watch, a, watch, a, a, a soldier who is on top in a tower looking down to see whether enemies are coming to attack the kingdom. In the ancient, ancient Israel and so many countries 
in the ancient time, countries are walled, like Wall of Jericho. You used to hear Wall of Jericho. Every country has a wall around the, the kingdom to make sure no enemy comes in. And the one mighty gate is put so that in, one entrance is allowed and a tower is built by the side of the gates. And a sentry is put on top, is asked to stay on top. Just like if you go to any military cantonment, they will see that it's a wall. No matter how the compound is, they will wall it and put tower, one or two. On top of it will be soldier with a gun, looking at anybody who could infiltrate. Those moments, there were no guns. But the one, the sentry, the one who is on top, we have his own horn or trumpet. What is his work? His work is to make sure that he sees everything that comes around the wall, around the compound, around the kingdom. And if he sees it immediately, he has to blow the horn inside the kingdom to alert these warriors to be ready that the enemies are, are approaching. They have to be ready. And this sentry must keep his eyes 24 hours awake. If he's tired, somebody can replace him. But on, on no account would he close his eyes. Because if he closes his eyes and the enemy is coming and it attacks the kingdom, he'll be dealt with. But if he blows the horn and the warriors there felt to the, we are tired, let us rest, rest a little bit. Or, or did do as if they didn't hear. And the enemies come, sorry for the, the kingdom. The sentry is free. God says to Ezekiel, you are the sentry. You're going to do this. When I speak to you, you must deliver my own message to them. No matter how hard my message may seem to be, you must deliver it to them. If they listen, life comes to them. If they don't listen, death will be their own. They will suffer. But if you listen to what I said, and they felt that it's too, this message is too much, and if I deliver it, they, they might kill me. I'm, let me keep it there, or let me, let me polish it in such a way that it will be very attractive. If you we, if we do that, and the harm, the problem comes to them, I will deal with you as a prophet. Every one of us, we have this mandate to be a sentry in your family. You look at your family. Can you tell your wife? Can you tell your husband or your grandchildren that look, you see, this what you're doing is not is wrong. You see what you say to that person, it was wrong. Can we say that? The most important thing is that we must say it. Doing it is not our problem. But we must keep saying the right thing. No matter how unpleasant it might, it might appear to be, we must keep saying it. If the one who's supposed to listen decided not to listen, it's not a problem. But if you want to make it sweet, you try to polish it, then you will have failed in your responsibility. Every one of us, we have that to make, that particular assignment God has given to us. This warning or this message to the prophet Ezekiel, God is saying it to, to us today. Have we taken our rightful position? Are we saying to ourselves, we are, we are now in the modern time. We are now in the modern time. Probably somebody you are speaking to says to you, what you are saying to me is, is went on one million years ago. We are now in the modern time. Morality is morality every moment. Good is good every moment. Truth is truth every moment. Truth is one. Good is one. 
Because that's why we say truth is God and good is God. So there must not be anything like new or old. If one is stealing million years ago, if he's still today, he's still stealing. If one is gossiping many years ago, he's still gossiping today. Evil is evil every moment. Are you, are you get, can you be tired to tell somebody that what you are doing, what you, you, what you put on in your body is not correct? You are drinking too much. Can you stop that? The place you are found, you are not supposed to be there as a good Christian. Can you say that? We have to be courageous enough. As I've said, God says to Ezekiel, you must say it. If they don't do, it's not their problem. If you advise your son, your daughter, your children, they don't respond. Keep saying it. Don't, don't think they're not doing it. I don't do it again. I don't say it again. No. If you correct your wife, if you correct your husband, it's not changing. Do not stop. Keep saying it. Don't say, but nothing is happening. Something will happen when it has to happen. It doesn't concern you. Do not give up. Today, there is something that happened among us. Technology. Technology is a gift God has given to us. It's a beautiful gift. Because when God created man and woman, he says increase and multiply. Which means, you see, this word you have, increase everything you can possibly increase. Multiply them. It's not only having children. It means everything on this earth. Increase it. Before you have no mobile phone. Now you have it. Who could imagine that you can, you can fly, enter in the, in, inside the airplane. It is flying you on the, in the air. Carrying 300 people at a go. One village. One village. One particular machine. Carry a village. On, in the air. 35,000 feet above sea level and carry you hours, 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 knowing that your life is any minute, anything can happen. Man's ingenuity. Increase and multiply. Submarine, very huge. Passing no more in, on top of the water. Inside the water. Goes miles and miles and miles. If you are inside it, you will think you are not in a normal room. But you are under the sea. Man's ingenuity, technology. When there was COVID, Zoom, okay, boom. You can, people are no more going to, you don't need to go to work. You just be in your room, having a meeting with those in America, those in Japan, those at the same time. Technology. But all this technology are under man's control. The worst thing that can happen to human beings is when this technology man has made becomes the master of man. And it's are becoming masters of our... Technology is slowly becoming our masters, slowly, slowly. And I'm saying it today like a prophet. We must not allow that to happen. We must not allow technology to be our masters. You know that there are many people who cannot do without their phone now. If you have your phone, yeah, if, somebody, if, without your, if your phone gets lost, you can, one week you are sick already. One week you'll be sick, you'll be sick, very sick, you'll be feverish, fever everywhere. Because I don't know where I place my, place my, place my phone. Everybody's talking, talk, talk, telling you, hey, let us pray. Ah, no, no, we have phone. It's just like one who wants to, who want to take cigarettes. Who is, who is ad addictive to cigarettes? We have been so much enslaved by that. Even in the mass, when we're in the mass, people will have their phone, playing with their phone. 
If it, if it turns in a day, in a month, or in a week, 24 hours by 7 days will give you around 168, day, 168 hours. And in a week, if you are coming to Mass every Sunday, you give only 2 hours. Mass, sometimes 2 hours, 2, two hours, 30 minutes because of bazaar, harvest and bazaar. So in 168 hours in a week, God, in 2 hours and 30 minutes, you want to give God devil is taking it, taking it away from you, taking all of them from you. So you'll be up chatting your phone, speaking, even time for consecration, you are still consecrating your phone. We are slaves to what we have made. That's idolatry. Idolatry is what, when we give homage and adore that which is supposed to honor us, in all this technology, no matter how it is, even the one automated ones, automatic ones, man is still in control because man had to switch on or switch off somewhere. But when they become our, our master, we are gone. We have to be conscious. We have to be very mindful of this. Anywhere we are, not only here in the church, even when you have a meeting, somebody's having a meeting, is doing something. Is we, we are in trouble. And we have to tell, don't be afraid to tell your daughter or your son, when you are having a meeting or when you are eating in the family, drop the phone. Drop it. You are in control. The phones are not controlling you. I know sometimes even here, such, such words we see people playing for, telling stuff, the person will be annoyed. Very annoyed. Come on, remove your hand. Do you, are you the one who brought me here? He don't know that they are sent by the God. They are the angels. Church wardens are angels. Trying to make sure you help you, they help you to concentrate within these two hours, 30 minutes. Only two hours, 30 minutes. Within 168 hours in, the, in a week to concentrate. But they, you are fighting them hard. And if they leave you, it becomes what the prophet say, was given. If you speak to them, they don't believe, they don't accept, leave them. We have to be conscious of what is consuming us. Small, small things are destroying us. It's destroying our family. We have to be conscious of that. There are many, many things we have to be conscious of. That's why the, 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 the response, response to response and then says, if you are called, if God speaks to you, do not harden your heart. Listen to what he says. We have to be conscious of this. Do not be afraid to speak. When I mention this technology, it is very unique and particular because it is consuming our time and the energy. There is no doubt. We gain a lot of knowledge from them. Especially from the phone, internet, loss of knowledge. But at the same time, they deprive us, deprive us of, of the deprive us of, of, us of, of many things. Many things are taken away from us. The phone, when we have it, we can be there. Fire will be burning anywhere. We 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 we'll be looking at it. You the, the gas is burning. The, the, you say, ah, huh? what do you mean? What do you, what are you talking about? What, I, I, what do you say? Eh? Before you know it, the fire even burned the person himself. Because we become slaves to what we have made. Do not allow that to happen. Even moments of prayer in your family, sometimes that also take away the whole time. We have to be conscious of this reality. In the place of this kind there's what's called order order is always a sign of God's presence the way we sit down quietly you have church wardens you have choir you have this is what's called order is a sign God is present and we must help each other to help, we must help each other because once we gather this way the demons evil ones are very active because they know that this little time we have, we want to listen to God. 
but they want to make sure that that little time is taken away. And therefore, every one of us, we must be alert to look left and right. If somebody is deranged, wake him up. Make him be aware of what's going on. Especially a moment of consecration. Don't allow, if it's somebody, somebody wants to go away, tell, don't go, don't go. This is the most important time. Drop everything. That's why they, even the, 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 the author servants, they ring the bell. When they ring the bell, it's, the, it's a calling attention that is very, the most secret hour. Let every concentration and focus be on the altar. Because it's the hour the heaven op opens wide. If you see the influx of the angels going up and down, because something that is marvelous is about to take place. The body, the bread and wine is about to take the form of body and blood of Jesus Christ. The angels cover here. And they, that's why we begin with the singing, holy, holy, holy. Because that's the song of the angels. The choir will be singing. Everybody, because angels are singing their song and we are participating. Mass is so sacred. That when we enter the mass, in fact, you pray before you are coming to Mass, God help me not to step out of the Mass from beginning to end. Help me, I beg you, Lord. Because this is a sacred hour when heaven opens and keep showering blessings, pouring blessings upon all those who are present. You know that whenever you attend Mass worldly, you save many souls from purgatory. Whenever as Mass is going on now, Around us here, millions and millions of souls of folk are around us. What are they waiting for? Your prayers. If you receive holy command worldly, you, you, you release many souls fly straight to heaven. They are expecting, but worse is when you receive it unworthily, they are deprived of heaven. God is calling us today. Let us be conscious. The gospel says the same thing. Correction. Be alert to one another. If somebody offends you, do not, don't, do, don't, don't delay. Go to him. Go to her. Say, look, this and this happened. Don't go and tell somebody else, this one offended me, that one offended me. No, no, don't do that. Tell him, ha, you spoke what I didn't like. If he doesn't want, go with two persons more, good people. Don't go to, with those who, who has a problem with him or her already. That once he sees them, he says, ah, so you bring this people to me, to talk to me. Don't do that. Bring good people to, the, to go, go and speak to him or her. If he refuses, then involve the whole community. What of if he refuses at the end with the community? What do you do? He said, make him a, a Gentile, a tax collector. What does he mean? No, it doesn't mean, okay, now since you didn't you agree with everything, we are no more of all, you go away, no more, we don't need you again. No. What it means is that how do you treat a Gentile or a tax collector at the first time? How you treat him is you engage him, engage, with, engage him or her like a pagan. Take your time. Nobody can see a pagan today and say, um, you, are, you are not a Christian. Uh, praise the Lord, and he cannot respond. Praise the Lord. So you don't know what is praise the Lord. Eh? Praise the Lord. I don't. Okay, pray Hail Mary. You don't do that. You take, you take, you need patience. Slowly, slowly. Speak to him. He may reject it. Don't worry, it's a normal thing. He go again. And he slowly, slowly, he'll be looking at you, or she'll be looking at you, how your life is. Your good life. The way you're kind. The way you're loving. You, the mind will begin to turn around that this person is are so good. Even I was against you, I was a little bit aggressive towards you, but you are kind towards me. You are, you are a special person. Come, come I hear what I said? Slowly, slowly. That's why I make him a Gentile or a tax collector. It's not to make him uh, uh, one who going to hell. No, 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 no. It means, there is no, what it means is that no one must be away from God. However, those who reject and reject and reject, at the end, use different mechanisms. The way you approach a pagan, you approach, approach him, you go to him or her with kindness, with loving he, will, he or she may say, I don't need you. I don't want to be a part of you. Don't worry. Take your time. Pray over it. 
go again, go again, go again. And not only by going, telling him, every, when you go with him, he said, let us open chapter 25 of Matthew. Uh, give him one Bible. No, 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 no. Uh, let us not pray it together. No, no, no. He does not know, he does know all those things. Don't try that once. Go to him. He's sick. He's, he go and look at him. He stay with him. How are you doing? Are you okay? Are you fine? Are you, have, have you taken food? Have you taken your medicine? He, doing this once, these are means and ways. You are showing that to, Christ, be, to be a Christian is a good thing. To be a Christian is a good thing. So he'll be looking at you. I think, I, think I, I, I like you. I like you. Notwithstanding all that, the way I was reacting towards you, but you are so wonderful to me. I want to be like you. Conversion starts. That's what Jesus says. You take your time. So we pray in this mass that Lord Jesus may give us the grace. First of all, to remember what God has said. You are a sentry. Don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid to speak. Even if you don't see a response, don't worry. But speak the truth to anywhere. But remember, God wants us to be a community and a family of people who are, lo- who are loving each other. So we can be offending one another in this in the process. But when the offense comes, don't worry. Take it gradually. Take it gradually, even to the point that you begin to see the person as a pagan. However, love, more love for him and her or to her is needed. May the, Jesus, may the Lord Jesus give us grace to do this through Christ our Lord. Amen.